Hello and welcome to this tutorial which follows up on an earlier series of tutorials regarding PHP and MySQL. What we were doing in the previous tutorials was creating a booking system for a restaurant's dining tables and there were a number of these tables and they could be booked out for a number of diners, that is customers, patrons, uh, but only in certain slots which were um, as you can see here uh, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and so on over lunchtime. There was a maximum number that could be sitting at the table and there was a date on which you could choose uh, to book the tables and there were certain customers, in this case we have Roberts, Chalmers, Evans, Cumberbatch and Knightley um, coming to dine with us and the number of diners turning up with those uh, the people who booked the table are up to 10 diners and in order to add a booking you had to click the add and then book the table well that was the previous set of tutorials which was to describe how that was coded and how it worked and the code you'll find is available on my Google Drive. Uh, you can just look in the comments for it. Uh, here what we're going to do is uh, kind of Ajax the system. Yes, asynchronous JavaScript and XML has a special object available to it which we're going to be looking at and we're really going to see not the theory of it but the practice of it that is how one might apply it to a system in this um, here we have a little list box here and whereas before we just kind of dumped the tables on the page here we're going to let people select tables. So if I want to see tables, now this is restaurant tables in a web table, not to get confused at all. So this is the, or the are the tables. So table number one got max cover of four, and there are um, two bookings for it, and so on. And that's how I set it up initially. Well, we're not going into the uh, booking system here. We're looking at the Ajaxing, the asynchronous. Um, refreshing of the page instead of reloading it. Anyway, these actually do that. So if I want to see, for instance, the patron customers table, if I scroll down, we can see it. It's appeared there now. And that is a refresh. There was no page reload. Of course, if I book something, if I book, say, on the 17th of May, um, uh, apparently Kira Knight is coming to the restaurant and uh, she's bringing with her eight diners and uh, over lunch she's actually coming at the late slot 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. and um, well we just change that then we say add and we say book the table and apparently that's already booked Okay, sorry about that. Now, what I've done is I've actually added it at an appropriate time and date. It's um, just a problem. I've been obviously playing with it before I did my tutorial. Okay, so we have actually added Kira Knightley to our um, patronage here, and we can see that she's coming in um, today. Right. Um, what did I want to show you was that the bookings table comes back from the database and the timer is stamped onto it just so we can see what's going on and it's actually updating as you've just seen there I hope by looking at the table and it's saying now 12.33.09 and in five seconds time it will update yet again and refresh without a page reload. Now there is a page reload when you click this submit button of course so uh, let's try it again. I'll try to choose a, a one that hasn't already been booked. Um, and we'll go for Cumberbatch. Apparently, Benjamin's coming. And we we'll book a table. Oh, I can't have that combination. 
but you did see that there was a page reload and that's what I wanted to show you okie dokies right well I'm just going to do a refresh here um, a reload I mean of the page and notice there is no uh, booking save which just appeared and that is because it's on a timer and we're going to show that timer of course before we close the tutorials so uh, don't worry about that we will have a look at it but that's the phenomenon which we're after um, an asynchronous refresh yes it's asynchronous even though it's <laughs> doing it by clock uh, tick an interval because the timer that's actually showing the table is in fact causing an Ajax, an Ajax uh, asynchronous call to the server and the server decides in its own time when to send the table back it's true that it's synchronous in the sense that every five seconds it will make a call for it but how long it takes before the table is actually sent back will de be determined by the server and not by the client and it may indeed be um, different intervals each time this is shown but we won't notice it because usually it's so short a time that um, is taken for the server to kind of catch up with the request anyway let's see this asynchronous call as well we want to see the restaurant tables um, and because this is such a small screen I'm not really able to show you um, that it's actually refreshed in fact the customer uh, table here has replaced the restaurant tables now the tables are there and if I just hold it here watch what happens when I click um, for patrons it's replaced in place now this is achieved by using the inner HTML method of HTML and uh, using div tags which we'll also see in a moment in fact this one here this position is also div tagged uh, with an ID so that we can use it for uh, to use inner HTML to place the text there what text well as you will know with the web one makes a request from a client machine to a server a web server uh, gives a response to that request anonymously if it is indeed on the internet and um, it doesn't know anything about uh, that uh, once it's sent out the response it kind of forgets about it and yet what we're doing is asking for a response making a request and asking for a response asynchronously um, even after the page has loaded we are making further requests almost silently from the user's perspective so for instance here okay the user knows that they're going to ask for tables restaurant tables uh, to be shown um, but it doesn't disturb the rest of the page at all this means uh, or enables great power to web developers and is a secret behind almost everything you see on modern web pages that look neat and tidy when they are have some sort of dynamic um, attachment to a database okay so I think it's time to probably get into the code isn't it well if we get rid of or just minimize I should say the rendering there we can look at the code now you sh can download a copy of this code um, first thing to notice is that there is a, uh, there are, is a script tag and the script tag starts there and ends here uh, it's within the head tag because that's traditional although not necessary these days of the kind of traditional HTML page or XHTML page that I uh, used in the previous tutorial okay now I'm saying you've got to remember it's JavaScript because if you're using PHP you could go writing or copying and pasting this tape uh, function in 
and forget that there's actually JavaScript because it does look at first glance very similar to PHP and you'll wonder what on earth is going on with all the cryptic error messages from your attempts to render the page okay so the first thing we've got uh, is this now this uh, sets an interval as it says as an anonymous function here don't worry about that it just makes it very neat um, and the method body here or function body says this show special function is to be executed every interval and the interval is here which is 5000 milliseconds or, which is of course 5000 thousandths of a second which of course is 5 seconds so that sets that up it's executed immediately on page load and it is not dependent this is not dependent upon a click or anything like that from the user so it's in the background and it's kind of silent and um, that's what we'll be pulling the uh, bookings table into this page now as I say here just above the function show tables with a string parameter um, and what I just before there it is a function that is ajaxed that is it will asynchronously refresh a web table on the page it asynchronously calls the PHP table getter to infill a table and maybe other things like a timestamp is shown now we do this by using an ID in a div tag and I'm going to show that rather than read out this comment. Um, first thing is to look at this function. We set up an ex, um, the object that we need, the XHT, the XML HTTP object, and we first of all draw attention or give our attention sorry to this uh, ID div tag which is called text tables here the emphasis being that these are web tables uh, that are uh, not sorry they're not web tables they're text they're not web tables they are the response text that comes back from the request the asynchronous request and they're plonked into a place set aside by this div tag ID using in HTML so this area of the page or document is set to basically an empty string we get it using get element by ID method of JavaScript well if it is empty the string that's passed here we just basically say alright won't do anything because well basically we haven't sent anything to have anything done with so uh, then we we have to address the different browsers for the object because um, different browsers have different JavaScript engines basically then when everything's ready we check for two particular parameters these ones here the ready state and the status having these values and when they do then the text tables will sorry the text table ID div will be filled in using inner HTML with the response text that comes back from the object this sounds complicated because it is but <laughs> basically what's happening is that asynchronously we've made a request for something off the web server and in its own good time which is when the status is 200 it's saying oh, I'm ready now it sends back the uh, what we asked for as text so whatever it is it's actually text when it comes back and then we can uh, see it in this area now if we just jump down 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 and we come down here 
and we find where the div tags are. Well, we've got in effect two. Uh, we've got this div tag, which is called txt special, and I'm going to come down in a moment, and this one here, which we've been looking at just now, the txt tables. It says your chosen tables will be listed here without a reload of the page. Now that is what's going to be replaced by the response text that comes back from the web server asynchronously using Ajax and using that XML HTTP object. And if we go back up again, we see the next phase. Before this text can come back, we really need to have asked for it. And this is where the re Quest takes place in the open method of the object. Uh, we use the uh, get form method, not the post, and uh, the name of the PHP script we want to run is called Ajax get tables. And we're going to send a parameter, we're calling it choice, and we're going to give it a value of what was passed to us. Well what we do know about this logically is it's not empty because if it were empty we wouldn't be down at this part of the function it would have returned already and there would not be any question about this being empty. So what kind of value could it have? Well it can have the values that are in the list box which are down here here. So if we look at the HTML, it's HTML that's generated by a, a PHP and it's here where we print a form. The action here is empty, that is it does not call anything. It doesn't call the page back. It's not going to have a hash in there. Uh, we don't want the page to be loaded at all. And it's just going to say in effect saying forget about that. Uh, we have a select HTML and the name we can give it is choose. I've chose choose not choice just to show you don't have to have the same parameter name. You can whatever you call the parameter name up here uh, you just have to make sure that that is recognized in this script because if it isn't nothing's gonna work. So this does not have to match the field name of the select tag what it does, it has to match what's in this Ajax get tables script at the top. Uh, so that can, doesn't have to be choose. That's why I chose a different word. I could have called it choice, which would make more sense in some ways. But um, anyway, it's got a different field name. And uh, on change event handler for this as an attribute of this tag. It says, well, when you've changed this, when you've actually selected something by clicking on the list box, then you execute the method show tables. And you send to it this dot value. That is the value of the choose object. The value of the choose object will depend on what comes next here and what the options are. So the only value it can have is that's useful to us, it can have um, tables or customers. What we show the user is tables in the first case and patron customers there. If I change this to uh, restaurant uh, tables, because of course there are web tables, there's database tables and there's restaurant tables, got tables all over the place. If we just say that, we don't change this because that's the name that we're kind of using for the actual table of tables. But the user may want to have it clarified that we're talking about restaurant tables. And um, so by changing that, we see in a moment it changes uh, the rendering, of course. The first value here is in fact nothing that is, well, it's an empty string. And remember, we pick that up, or if it is comes through as nothing, we pick it up and we don't take any action. So 
the user can choose no table at all there. They don't have to have one of these tables showing. And that's that really. So these are the values that were sent as parameters. So it will be choose dot value equals uh, in the case, say, if they choose uh, the restaurant tables, they will choose cut tables, and that will be the value that's sent to this JavaScript function. So, what happens when it's received? Let's have a look at that. We just save that there. Come back here. We have a look at this. This is the same, more or less, as we had before, only I've extracted it and put it into its own separate script. It has a beginning and end where it actually connects here and the three possible options or values that can come through are bookings, tables or customers. Notice that we're picking up the value of the choice parameter that is being sent by the Ajax object and that is what comes after the question mark and it will be captured here by the PHP choice variable and then that choice variable will be interrogated uh, on a selection basis here so if choice is bookings then bookings will be shown and if it's tables then tables will be shown that's restaurant tables of course table and if it's customers it will be shown and then of course we close the database so this is fairly straightforward as a script I hope I trust oh I should mention also just here require once the style that just makes it look uh, the way it does and of course we could choose to change the style um, script oh just a note since we're here about this I do give you a script under menu where you can actually uh, create this uh, just by running a script but you can also go directly into PHP my admin and set up this database uh, DB 2015 if you don't of course these scripts won't run so you have to do something about that let's go back to our actual um, web page. We see the time has been going on here, it's now 12.52 and um, what I wanted to do here was show you the menu that you get with this um, collection. So if I had a collection you can create the database here if you want to or you can reset all the tables here uh, and you can add a booking. I don't use the export SQL or import SQL method of PHP my admin because I'm trying to concentrate on the PHP scripting rather than my SQL operations. Okay, let's go back. In fact, we just reload that. Notice that uh, the timer has not kicked in in its interval and it just has there, and so we've got our table back. We're going to focus now on the uh, effect of the timer because in practice uh, quite a lot or often the asynchronicity is uh, rendered via a timer secretly going on in the back or background of the the web page and uh, to look at that we need to look at the code so we can see that this is updating as we look at it, it will update again in a second or two well, five anyway if we just look at that there, that's updated again and if we were to change any of these in the uh, PHP my admin, which I'm just going to uh, launch via WAMP which I'm using here so it will come up in a moment and of course this is how it looks and I click there and it comes in and this will pop up again we're gonna see how that's done right there it is it's popped up again and um, I'll next show you how we go into PHP my admin 
here we are in PHP my admin and I'm going to look at the Ajax uh, the I'm going to look at the DB 2015 um, database and we can see we've got a bookings table, customer table, a slots table and a tables table and this was an unfortunate name wasn't it um, yes yeah, so we've got those and I'm going to actually change something. I'm going to change uh, perhaps in the customer. No, not in the customer. I beg your pardon. I'm going to change the booking, aren't I? Um, change something in the book. Now I've come here to insert something. What I'm going to actually do is uh, change a value actually of the number of diners on uh, a dining op um, booking for today. So the number of diners was one. I'm going to change that to 99. Now we know that this is actually domain integrity is violated because it's uh, not supposed to have that kind. But I'm just hoping it will show us very clearly on an update. If we just look at this, and you can see that it's already updated the number of diners to 99. And if I go back, I have to be quick here. It's every five seconds. But if I just um, edit that and hopefully quickly this time make it I don't know let's make it 888 so I've got to press go and quickly go to the so go and then come back here and we should say that there you go it's updated in place for us there so that's definitely working on Ajax let's look at the code and the code for that is of course here and if we go down to um, show special you can see that this JavaScript function refreshes asynchronously the web table updated by timer it uses the same logic as the one above that we've seen already and uh, we just make sure this time the string is given a value that we want which is bookings in this case that's the special table that we want to see and uh, everything else is actually the same while we are talking about it being the same, we haven't really explained what this is here. This parameter of the open method is actually saying we want asynchronicity. If we made that false, it would become synchronous. It kind of defeats the point of having Ajax. But it is an option. You can make that false. But it should be true if you want um, Ajax to be Ajax. That's asynchronous. Right, we're getting to the end of this tutorial, which is the longest one I think I've ever done. It's coming up for 30 minutes. But I hope it's been useful for this. Is usually, I understand, a tricky subject, uh, Ajax, to learn um, on the web or from anywhere else, really, for that matter. Um, and I just want to reiterate the important parts of it, please. Right, well, the most important thing is that it works. You need to know what it is you want to uh, refresh and not reload and that's absolutely the first thing you should be doing. Normally the Ajaxing, as I call it, it happens after you've got a system working. It's not something you do first of all, you do it afterwards, it's a bit like CSS for your style for the page. It's something you do because it's something you'll be useful. It may be cosmetic from the user point of view of the web page, or it may be uh, practical. It may be that you need that information, as in this case for bookings updated um, every so often without being asked. Um, or it may be you want to uh, have a particular table in a particular place on the page and replace another table as we saw earlier. People today, developers, rarely use Ajax as such as we have done in JavaScript. They usually use something like jQuery, which is a library. Um, one of the backers of it is in fact Google, so it's a very prestigious um, really library for us, jQuery. Uh, but I've not used that for pedagogic reasons this time. Uh, Ajax works fine as we've seen, but it's usually easier to use if you use jQuery 
and uh, the um, the amount of code you have to write is very much reduced because the libraries are compact and also it will have much more compatibility with different browsers uh, in the world and even Internet Explorer will work properly with it. Um, okay well let's look at um, this as well um, the only reason for having the timer here is because I wanted to show that it was on a timer and you don't have to have explicit or even a list box you could have buttons you could have tabs you could have anything you want really that would generate a trigger to send off an Ajax request for updated text information also I should say that you can request XML because obviously it's an XML HTTP object you don't have to have text straight you could in fact bring back XML tags which are text anyway and then they can be parsed or read as XML now in terms of a reprise of the um, the code the important thing you need to remember is if you're going to have an interval you need to set it and if you're going to have a method or a function in JavaScript it needs to be outside of the PHP tags it needs to be under a script tag of some kind and um, it cannot be part of the PHP uh, is something that is uh, as I said earlier quite easy to make a mistake on and uh, the, the components you need you must ha set up the object and you must say what the URL is going to be received as, what the parameters are going to be received as and make sure that the receiving script is set up with the same uh, basically the same name of the parameter and you need to make sure you do have a separate script that it can call so if you've set up a system already as I had done in a previous tutorial you can't then just say oh I'll Ajax that and um, I'll not bother taking it out you have to separate it out so it can be called distinctly and differentially by the uh, XML HTTP objects open method so you have to extract it out and put it into another as another script basically if you've already made your system and usually when you're Ajaxing something you've already made your system well thank you for listening and watching and I hope this has been useful to you and the code, as I say, will be available from my Google Drive. Thank you.